This next presentation is a huge fan of the Terminator movies, has me totally terrified. Please welcome Peter Acero with Saving the World from Killer Robots and Stupid AI. Peter? Oh, thank you very much. <clears throat> In 1969, when she was a faculty member here at the New School, Hannah Arendt wrote a short book entitled On Violence. In it, she writes, and I quote, no government exclusively based on the means of violence has ever existed, even the totalitarian ruler whose chief instrument of rule is torture, needs power as a basis, the secret police and its net of informers. Only the development of robot soldiers, which would eliminate the human factor completely and conceivably permit one man with the push of a button to destroy whomever he pleased, could change this fundamental ascendancy of power over violence. We now have the, end quote, <clears throat> we now have the technologies to make those robot soldiers a reality. Drone technologies have enabled targeted killings across the globe by the push of a button. Such remote controlled warfare, however, still requires human operators and teams of image analysts to identify targets and engage violent force. But militaries are hard at work to fully automate what the International Committee of the Red Cross has called the critical functions of weapon systems, the targeting and engagement of lethal force. The United Nations has been holding meetings for the past six years on the topic of lethal autonomous weapon systems, and I invite you to read my opinion piece in this week's Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists for an update from Geneva. As part of the civil society campaign to stop killer robots, I have been honored to work with such organizations as Human Rights Watch and Amnesty International and many others, and alongside inspiring activists, including Nobel laureates Jody Williams and the New School's own Ray Aitchison, um, who we heard from earlier today. My scholarship examines how, by delegating the authority to kill to machines, we make it more difficult to hold humans accountable for violence or responsible for its consequences. We also make it more difficult to apply international humanitarian laws that aim to protect civilians and limit military conflict. The Geneva Conventions assume that humans make decisions of distinction, proportionality, and military necessity, I have argued that machines cannot be moral or legal agents and thus cannot take responsibility for determining when it is appropriate to take human lives, even in armed conflicts. As such, it is an affront to human dignity to delegate such authority inappropriately to a machine. Such machines are not capable of lawful killing, but only mechanical slaughter. Autonomous weapons will also raise a host of practical problems from costly and destabilizing arms races to hacking uh, and security vulnerabilities to empowering small groups of people or even individuals to unleash massive levels of destruction and kill in great numbers, constituting a new kind of weapon of mass destruction. But the right to life is only one of the pressing human rights issues raised by the spread of artificial intelligence and autonomous machines. We are on the cusp of a world of self-driving cars and delivery drones. We are rapidly automating the decisions that will determine our opportunities and the courses of our lives, from credit scores and loans to employment and promotion decisions, from access to healthcare and social services to exercising our rights of citizenship to vote and to travel, from which neighborhoods the police patrol, who they stop, and the length of criminal sentences, from college admissions to who has access to scholarships and student loans. Many of these algorithmic decision-making processes are using historical data, poisoned by numerous biases and reflective of long-standing structural inequalities. In a society, <clears throat> excuse me, removing the biases of gender and sex, race and religion, ethnicity and language, age and ableism, and class and wealth from our technologies and from the data that they collect will be one of the most important technical and social challenges that we will face in the coming years. This is stupid AI. And if we fail to teach it what kind of society we want to live in, it will amplify the inequalities and injustices we have long lived with to new levels we cannot yet fathom. And it will do this under the cover of technological progress, the statistical objectivity of data, and in ways that make it increasingly difficult to scrutinize and to hold accountable. Even as automation displaces our labor, citizenship and the protection of human rights and dignity in the age of robotics and AI will not be a leisurely pursuit. We have a lot of work to do.